In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of measures of dispersion. So don't forget, when you're thinking of measures of dispersion, you're thinking about the variation or the spread of the data. So again, just looking at this simple diagram, both of these distributions have the same center, but they have very different dispersions, right? This one is far more spread out, the top one is far more spread out, the bottom one is far more clustered, so the spread in the data sets is very different, even though the center is the same. All right, so in an earlier video, we discussed the concept of range, which we said was okay for small data sets, but not great for larger data sets. So what do you do if you have a larger data set and you want to measure the dispersion? Well, there are two main options, the variance and the standard deviation. There are other measures of dispersion, but we're going to discuss these two in our course primarily. The variance has a symbol sigma, lowercase sigma, squared, to represent it when you're dealing with the population variance. And when you're talking about the sample variance, we have S squared, S being the English letter S, whereas the Greek letter sigma is the symbol we use for the population values. Okay, so sigma squared, S squared. For standard deviation, for the population standard deviation, we're gonna use lowercase sigma, but without the square this time, right? And the sample standard deviation, just S, and again, without the square. So we're going to discuss this a little bit later, but the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So if you take the standard deviation and you square it, you end up with the variance. Likewise, if you take the sample standard deviation and you square it, you end up with the sample variance. So that's the relationship between these two quantities. Here's the computational formulas for both of them. Computational formula just means that it's been manipulated algebraically in order to make the computations in the real world a little bit faster and simpler. Ironically, the formula actually looks more complicated when it's expressed this way. However, the advantage is it's a lot easier to work with. So again, you see the notation again. In this case, it's sample variance s squared, and it's equal to this expression. And over here, you have s being the square root of the same expression we have over here for the sample variance. So the only difference here is you take the square root of both sides, right? Losing the square on s and gaining just the positive root of that expression. Something worth noting here, anything that's squared will end up being positive, right? So this expression can never give you a negative value. And likewise, when you take the square root of a positive number, you will always get a positive result. So again, this expression will always be positive as well. So you cannot have a negative variance or a negative standard deviation. All right, which measure of variation is preferred? Well, we're going to prefer the standard deviation to variance in most cases. The reason why this is is because that square that we saw on the expression for variance, this square here, that square indicates in the process of doing the calculation, we actually square all the measurements. And when you square all the measurements, all the units become squared. So the units then become troubling. It's very hard to understand the connection between the original measurements and the variance's units. It's very abstract. In fact, I'm not sure that you can make any reasonable interpretation of that. So for example, if I were to measure height in inches, the unit on the variance would be inches squared. And the problem with inches squared is that that's an area measurement, right? That's a unit you would have for when you measure something that has an area, right? But height is a linear measurement, right? Another really obvious example is if something is measured in dollars. When you square all the measurements, then the new unit becomes dollars squared. What in the world is a dollar squared, right? We have no idea or no concept of a dollar squared. So the units become something that no longer makes sense in the context of the original measurements. So that's one major reason not to use the variance if you have the option to use the standard deviation. In most situations, people would find the standard deviation more intuitive and more understandable. The other thing is that standard deviation has linked to it a couple of important theorems that we're going to discuss in the course. And those theorems help us really understand or interpret the standard deviation. Or I would should say that using the standard deviation in conjunction with these theorems really gives us an idea about the distribution or spread or layout of the data. And one of the theorems is for all distributions. It can be applied to any data distribution. So the reality is, is that because of these two theorems, one of them is going to be called Chebyshev's theorem and the other one will be the empirical rule, but because of these ideas, we will essentially be able to interpret standard deviation a little more simply than we would be able to interpret variance. However, since the two quantities are so connected, standard deviation only has to be squared to become the variance. Because there's that, that simple link between the two of them, obviously variance is not hopeless, it's a perfectly suitable measure of dispersion, and statisticians work with it all the time. 
The only difference is, is that for the general public to make sense of the statistics we use, it's probably much simpler to work with standard deviation. So in general, it's preferred.